For those of you who know, you know Nemesis is absolutely one of my favorite villains, one of my favorite Middle World characters, favorite Middle World stories. He's one of the characters that I know, considering all the horrors and the thrillers out there, not many characters ever really actually get to me. And this is the one character I'm just like, holy crap. This guy's actually pretty damn scary with the whole Batman archetype of, you know, if Batman were being evil. It is a really scary concept, especially with his capabilities and his resources. He's a very dangerous son of a bitch. And I'll tell you what, though, he's made for some incredibly entertaining stories over the years. And we've had some great artists like Steve McDevitt, a co-creator, Jorge Jimenez. If you wouldn't even want to count Pepe Larraz for doing the big game arc, which obviously involved Nemesis himself. And now we get Valerio Jean Giordano for the third Nemesis book titled Nemesis Rogues gallery and i've been highly 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 anticipating this book for a long time and with some of the art we have seen on twix because yes twitter x twix i'm like oh man this is gonna be good i can't wait for this to come out and well it came out and now you know what let's freaking talk about it come on in we're nightmares on the best part of my day I if you're worried that i'm gonna do any spoilers don't worry i'm gonna be as spoiler friendly about this as possible because i do know many people have lies and not everyone has a chance to just read it right away and i'm one of those lucky people who could get to reading it right away so anyways let's hit to it so this story is a very um very standard formula setting on um, basically we're setting the stage for things to come this is like this is the issue that is putting all the dominoes in place this is nemesis regrouping after the events that happened in big game after how we saw him basically get his ass handed to him by all the heroes in the middle world and this time he's now reassembling himself and he goes about by some really dark mystical occult type of stuff deep down in la and yes don't worry that there isn't key details there and he is basically he's getting himself back up to speed and he knows he's lost almost everything and it's clear that he is out to reclaim what he has lost and he also has to have a, a certain um demand met in order to get what he wants back which is his power and resources and he has to have a certain thing done if he doesn't do it well no deal for mr matthew anderson himself but man even though this uh issue once again this is the the formula type of setting the stage for thing what we get in here is a lot more visceral and cerebral and there's a really great emphasis on it kind of being more like a thriller i don't know if that's saying the stage for what's to come in the upcoming issues because you know nemesis and nemesis really a lot more straight ahead action that's not to say that there's not action in this book because there is but this this really reads like a really creepy uh thriller book which is still great and different on its own merits but i feel like this issue is going to be this way just because it's once again like big game before it those first number one issues like that one before it they're kind of like getting everything set up and then they unleash the bastards with issues two and so on and so forth so that's where i feel like that's going i could be wrong though could it keep up with the psychological thriller type of thing sure could be and i would still welcome that considering what we got in issue number one now that said though yeah straightforward story nice and simple and to the point you understand who the players are you know what the motivations are you know what the main thing is all about and then of course you have valero gene giordano's art man is he a great fan i, I could see why mark went with him for this art because he has a really great emphasis on these characters looking really dark and it he has a very moody setting to his uh, art and uh his colorist uh has a really great emphasis on orange and green and it really enhances a lot of the dark moments especially when there's like a particular ritual going on it, it feels like you are in one of the most creepiest supernatural uh, flicks ever. It's, it's, it's a rare moment of mysticism in the Nemesis stories, if you will. And I, I absolutely thought his art was great. And for the few moments of really brutal violence, holy crap. It, it reminds me of some of the stuff that you would see like Vincent Locke do with Cannibal Corpse album covers it is very vicious very grueling and his nemesis looks very menacing i i definitely i felt the arms on my hair standing up it was very chilling to see this character in his um prime form drawn by valero it is really damn good this art i man he is incredible and once again mark how do you find those wonderful artists i want to know because seriously 
it's damn good. I, I don't, it's like, it's like water's wet, the sky is blue. Another Mill World book with great artists. Well, well, of course we are at this point. So anyways, anyways, what did I think overall the comic and issue number one? I thought it was a really good comic. I'm not going to say it was like a, you know, a grand slam, but it was a really good home run. I would say it still probably gets like an 8, 8.1. And you, once you can tell this issue is formatted for the uh, trade uh, paperback storyline because it's it really sets up once again everything that's to come as mentioned earlier so this is really just getting the ground running and that's good because you need to do all this stuff in order to get to all the heavy fun artillery action oriented material so yeah 8.1 looks like the best could be the score for me i have a feeling though come issue two and forward i have a feeling we're gonna pedal to the metal hard like we are action jackson now thank you for watching this video and you lay down your souls to the gods rock and roll barbecue huh how do you like your ribs